What's up guys, Sam Benjamin here for another video. As usual, I'm here with my good friend Ty. Lately on my channel, we just kind of wrapped up a segment on the low knee shield. Um, low knee shield is something that I particularly prefer as opposed to the high knee shield. Um, there's no, I don't think it's better, I don't think it's worse, right? To each his own in jiu-jitsu, if you have more success with the high knee shield, then by all means, that is what works for you. For me, it's been the low knee shield. I made a bunch of videos on it, so I'm gonna link those above or in the description. I showed some sweeps, some control, and then I actually had a friend of mine uh, named Giancarlo, who's a Lucas Slippery brown belt and a brown belt world champ, show how he destroys the knee shield, which some people were messaging me about, and they're like, does the knee shield work when you train with a guy like that? I'm always super honest, like Giancarlo's much heavier than me, he's a world champ, he smashes my knee shield. He's, he's super good at passing it. But on guys my weight, I do really well with the low knee shield and I'm able to hold off almost anybody. It's, it's kind of one of the positions where I go to for control. I had a lot of questions about what you do when they do do the leg weave pass or the sandwich pass. It has several different names. I'm not so good with the nomenclature, but it is something that in the low knee shield you do want to be prepared for. So today I wanted to make a very quick video just demonstrating what I do personally when they do the leg weave and the low and the uh, sandwich pass. I don't want this to be like one of those videos where I'm like, oh, well, you just gotta stop it or just don't let them get there because it's something that you encounter and most of the times, in my opinion, I think that you can stop them from passing from there by having a good clamp and controlling their far leg, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a second. But if you can't stop them, I'll also show you an alternative that I do when the guy's maybe much bigger or just much stronger. So let's get into it. So guys, what we're talking about is when we're playing low knee shield, and I don't wanna go over all the, let's move it back a little. I don't wanna go over all the basics and the control that I've demonstrated in previous videos, so if you wanna check out the position and get to know it more, I'll link those in the description or above, like I said. But the position is Ty brings his hand and weaves it over my top leg and controls my bottom leg. I've seen people weave and control here, and I've seen people even weave and try to control the collars or the lapel. In my opinion, I think that this grip is superior and this is the grip that's more troublesome. So most of the times when I'm playing low knee shield, my knee is shallow, my clamp is very strong, I'm drastically on my side, and my hand is framing because he's kind of trying to come into me, right? So when I see him weave his hand in, one of the first grips that I try to attain is an outside pant grip on the knee. Why? I want to attain this grip to prevent him from sprawling. Most of the time, the goal in order to break my clamp in this position, the sandwich leg weave pass, is for Ty to sprawl back, break my legs, and then walk around. Right? That's, that's troublesome. And depending on your dexterity and how tight you can clamp, you might not be able to just stop it with that. Even myself, who plays low knee shield all the time, I can't normally just stop it with that. So one of the things that I look to do is control this far pant and make sure my frame is super strong because we have to think of what we're sacrificing in order to attain this pant grip. Normally I'm blocking the arm from cross facing and the shoulder so that he can't flatten me out. So when I go here, naturally what can he do? He can cross face me. Most people with the clamp won't cross face. Why? In order to cross face me with this leg weave position, he has to turn his hip so that we're almost perpendicular. So when Ty turns his hip, he's actually strengthening my knee shield. Right, right now my clamp gets tighter. I'm sure Ty can attest to that. So what they normally do is control the collar, right? That's the popular position. So what I do is focus my frame hand on that shoulder right underneath the throat and control these pants and I clamp up really tight. I drive my knee into his hip here. When he tries to sprawl, it's almost impossible for him to break my clamp as long as I control this pant. Now being honest, some of you guys might have your knee shield broken, right? You definitely have to have some dexterity here to hold this, but you can do it. Right, practice makes perfect. So when have your partner try to sprawl slowly and slowly and see how much you can hold them, right? And when you hold them, most of the times, eventually they'll abandon. If he just continues to try this, then I might try to start bringing him over and throwing into like a single X position or something like that. There's different options. But this video is just about defending it, right? So grab the far pants, keep the frame strong under his neck and push that clamp into him and do not let him sprawl, okay? So that's pretty much the first thing I do, right? We're here, we're fighting, I see him get the script, I grab those pants. Because that's also gonna allow me to do other things. If the guy's much stronger, and I feel like I've either rolled with him before or I just know he's gonna break through this, what I'll end up doing is opening my left leg inside and out to pull it out and then drawing my right leg to his hip. So if I see him do this, I can kind of telegraph what he's gonna do. So right here, before he gets this grip, I'm fighting here. Right away, I grab the pants, pull this in, 
right? I pull my leg in and then I draw my right leg to his hip really hard, like this. If he has that collar grip, he's exposed to where I can maybe grab the top of his shoulder, yank him in and go for an omoplata, just like this. That's a sequence I do pretty often. So again, we're here, I know he's gonna break. I'm here like this. I just went to feet on the hips, open guard. And then I go for that omoplata. I like to control that shoulder grip because it lets me guide my opponent, right? So again, we're here, I know he's gonna pass. I'm like this. And then I can shoot for that omoplata position. Still controlling his leg, he can't roll, he can't do anything. I'm holding his shoulder, he can't pull his shoulder out. And now I can start to attack with my omoplata finishes. Sometimes I've even been able to just get triangles from this position, right? If the guy's here, I've been able to hold him off, hold him off, and he's still just sitting in this position, sometimes he'll abandon it and I can let go of my pant grip for a second. Pummel inside, draw my leg in, and clamp the triangle, right? So that's something I do if he's been relentless about it, right? I've been holding him, I've been holding him, he's not doing anything, and then I pull him for the triangle. If I don't think I can get the triangle because he gets his head out, one more plot on the other side, right? So there's a lot of options, but the most important thing I would tell you is to prevent the pass initially by focusing on controlling his pants, focusing that frame hand underneath his throat, and making sure he's not able to sprawl. Excuse me, if he is able to sprawl, then we're gonna to start to look for omoplatas and triangles. It can be an omoplata on the far side arm, or it can be an omoplata on the leg weave arm. So anyways, guys, as usual, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm really trying to grow the channel, and it really helps. Hit that little notification bell as well. It's gonna notify you anytime I make a new video, and I do make videos in segments, so it will help you follow along. Thanks to my friend Ty. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, guys.